So uh, we continue to be interested in uh, the future of business. How, how do you improve customer support? There's a lot happening. You know, I live right by the Ritz, and they have four computer systems, none of which talk to each other. And that's just sort of, it's sort of indicative of how the, even a top-rate customer service organization is struggling to get into the new world where you can really step things up. MindTouch has a way to uh, provide support uh, across your entire company and uh, do it in an innovative way. And we're going to talk to MindTouch right now. And who are you? Good to see you again, Robert. I'm Aaron Fulkerson. I'm one of the founders and the CEO of MindTouch. And who is MindTouch for? Well, who, you know, sh who should be calling you or checking you out? We, we started our focus with technology companies, software companies, because it's what we knew, right? Well, all of our background was in software, so we started there. So, and, and we started with um, um, younger software companies, because we at the time were a younger software company. So people like RightScale in the early days, and um, uh, gosh, I can't think of some of the other startups that we've ha we still have. Uh, they're, they're still customers of ours. Uh, that's where we started. Then we started seeing more and more larger customers come to us that were technology companies. And uh, now we're seeing um, consumer goods, consumer electronics. Uh, we just closed uh, Remington Firearms, which they have Bushmaster, Colt, Remington, eight brands, Marlin. Um, <clears throat> they're a customer now. Uh, and, and the amazing thing about that is this company is over 100 years old. We closed them for a very large annual recurring license because it's a SaaS model that we employ uh, in 45 days because they just immediately got the value for their users and their support agents. What was going wrong at, 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 at that company? What, what, what drove them to seek new tools out? Well, what were they trying to do with their business? The, the, what they're trying to do with their business is uh, it's really about their brand. It's about uh, helping their customers and creating brand and revenue opportunities within their customer base. So um, I'm talking about support and brand. How does that make sense? Well, I think we all get it. I mean, look at Apple, right? Their customer support is phenomenal. You go in the yeah. store. Um, so for Remington, and it's all t uh, combined because when you do something in the store, uh, the PR team often knows about it because so there's a combined system at Apple that lets everybody have the same answer and That's have right. the same access to the same problem so they can see, oh, there's a trend of problems. We better fix that before it becomes a, a you know, an issue on the verge or something like yeah, that. Yeah, precisely, right? This customer support experience, the knowledge that powers that customer support experience becomes this really highly valuable medium for customer intelligence that allows you to drive your product roadmap, your uh, marketing automation systems, your um, messaging, uh, and of course your content strategy. Where are their gaps? Where are their quality problems? But for Remington, it was, um, uh, they, they have uh, their, their biggest peak months, of course, are during hunting season. So they have this huge volume of, of support requests. And uh, they literally were using this, this book that they flipped through to respond to their customers. Uh, that every single page, every, every agent's book is different. They have like post-it notes and loose leaf paper in it. And uh, there's no way for them to be fast with their customers, ramping up new agents. Also, their customers are changing. It's not old men anymore. It's people who expect to be able to self-serve online. Yep. Uh, and then how do you know that you're delivering a consistent quality message? How can you mine analytics uh, about, well, where do we take the product lines? Where do we message? What about like within Gander Mountain or Cabela's? Uh, it, what can we learn from interactions there on site if we put a kiosk with the same knowledge that's wired into our marketing automation systems, yep. our analytics? This gets to where I, I think business is going I, with this Google Glass kind of thing. And there'll be others, right? And Google's going to be... So if we could hop ahead 10 years, I'm just going to talk to this and I'd say I need help with my HDTV or my car or, my, or I want a reservation at the hotel or what, whatever I want in life and I'm having trouble with, I'm just going to talk with it. And it's going to talk to systems that have this data. So if you're, <laughs> if you're at Remington and you're working on paper books, that ain't going to help you get yeah. in a new world, right? So I think you're a real significant stepping stone. So tell me what, what um, MindTouch is, because it's a bunch of pieces that help a company like Rackspace or Procter & Gamble or the Ritz or whatever get to the promised land of 10 years from now where customers are just going to be able to talk to their information system and get the contextual answer really quickly. Yeah, I think the key thing that we did from the very beginning is uh, we took an approach that 
before we built, before we build even today, an end user interface, we build the machine interface, right? One that uh, adheres to open standards, is loosely coupled with the platform. So everything you do uh, with MindTouch can be done in an automated fashion, right? So that means that three years from now, 10 years from now, uh, that knowledge is gonna be able to be plugged into whatever technology or application, and it's going to be delivered to that technology or application in a contextually relevant basis based on that user's group enlistment so that the, the knowledge is adaptive to who they are, where they are, what system they're pulling it from. So from the very beginning, we built that. And that uh, probably is a huge differentiator for you versus your competitors, which oh, were yeah. built in the 90, 80s or 90s and are built on an on-prem system. Because you're all cloud computing. You're on the wrong cloud, but you're on a, <laughs> somebody's cloud system, right? So you're all cloud-based. You're all modern. Right, uh, and right. You're so built to be API'd. So as somebody who, like SRI, I, I just visited SRI, and they have a dialogue manager that they're building for, for a bank that you just talk to the bank. And it, you're not talking to a human. Right. It sounds like you're talking to humans. It's really mind blowing. But they could plug that system into the back end of MindTouch pretty easily because it's all API'd. Right? Precisely. So what they do is what they, you know, there's, there's two parts. There's that services layer that we expose knowledge as a service. You know, there's been some talking around knowledge as a service. Well, uh, what most vendors mean is that, oh, as long as you're inside our, applic our monolithic application stack, we can deliver knowledge as a service within our application stack. What we mean is, it, it doesn't matter. You, you can hit a REST endpoint and pull the knowledge out and uh, parse it so that if it's, uh, let's say, um, a personal agent or a uh, personal assistant, then it would just process that, that knowledge and deliver it to the customer. And of course, that then can be uh, adapted to that user's group enlistment, of course. So that's one piece of it, that services layer, where knowledge as a service. The other part of it is, and this, this is something that, that, no, that nobody really, nobody solved, but the ability to take it so that um, a support agent, a uh, technical writer in the product team, product managers, customers, partners, can just click edit in, in a web browser or on a, a, a mobile device and contribute knowledge or update the knowledge. Or perhaps it's somebody in the field. We have a, a customer, 400 field technicians in Germany, in one country alone. They're out in the field. You know what they were doing before? They were using PDFs. Yeah. to service these multi-million dollar systems. And there's, they're like, this PDF isn't even up to date. There's better ways to do it. But they have no way to collaborate and provide that feedback back to all of the other field technicians in yeah. that country, let alone the rest of the world. Wow. So just so, we solve that problem, which is huge for most of our customers. Just that alone, they're like, yeah, you know, with our new release schedules, it's not like we're shipping software every three years or products every three years. We're shipping it every three weeks. Yeah. So how do we keep up the documentation? And the only way you can do that is by spreading the responsibility over many parties to collaborate, provide feedback. And so, that's another thing we solved. So let, let's talk about what it does for a real company. I think you have HTC on the screen, right? Yep, that's correct. So uh, what are we seeing here? And, and how is that using MindTouch? I, tell me what I'm seeing. So HTC is a customer, and I'll start off with like why they came to us. They came to us because they wanted to deliver a complete, holistic uh, customer experience. It was uh, uh, the chief customer experience officer, uh, it's something like, it's title, something like that. And he came to us and he said, look, uh, we need to make sure that when somebody has a question or wants to understand how to use their, their uh, phones, that they get the best possible answer. They don't end up on a third party site that's somebody bad mouthing our products, right? So, um, uh, or because they don't understand it, of course. So what we want to do is unify our message to our customers in, so that they're not going to uh, sprint and downloading a PDF, right? Yeah. We control the customer. This creates a relationship with the customers for HTC and then, of course, allows them to have this very deep understanding of their customers, uh, what their buying patterns are, et cetera, where there's potentially opportunities for innovating the products, uh, opportunities for upselling, et cetera. So what you're looking at um, here is uh, this is this is entirely powered by MindTouch. Uh, so this is, this is not running on HTC servers. This is running on MindTouch. Correct. Servers. This is support.htc.com. It's powered entirely by MindTouch. And uh, I, I like to show this customers. Everybody has a cell phone, so it's pretty easy to understand. Yep. But what's important to understand is that this um, this experience is really one facet of the overall experience that MindTouch is powering. So this is the web self help center. Yeah. Uh, but um, we also, for our customers, commonly, commonly do uh, contextual help on device or in application. So you click on a help button, and the same knowledge that's powering this web interface shows up on a contextually relevant basis to your group enlistment, your device, so it's contextually relevant, which I know is a real hot topic for you yeah. uh, right now. Absolutely. Uh, now, 
we see the front end, that's this the customer view. What's happening behind the scenes? What what did MindTouch really change about HTC as a company when they got on MindTouch versus their older systems? So several things. One thing we did is we unified all of their knowledge in uh, an environment that it wasn't just the people in Taiwan producing PDFs uh, that they could collaborate on it, right? Now support agents are co-collaborating with them. Uh, partners, uh, product managers, they can go in, and of course you can't see this because I don't have permission to do it, but uh, they can collaborate in a web environment or a mobile environment on the knowledge, provide feedback. Uh, there's a whole analytics back end. There's no analytics on PDFs. So, you know, uh, one of our customers is a software company, one of the world's largest software companies, and they're like, hey, our documentation sucks. Well, how do you know it sucks? It's a PDF. There's no analytics. For all you know, it's awesome, but nobody can find it because it's in some PDF somewhere, and nobody wants to read that. Yeah. So we make that into a web service, provide a web interface to it, plug it into the agent empowerment experience, whether it's chat, contact center, email, through CRM support ticketing, yeah. um, and even deliver it proactively in the applications itself. I, you know, I've worked at a bunch of different enterprises, and uh, there's lots of systems. Uh, SAP's running our inventory, Salesforce is running our Salesforce. Do you hook into any of those existing enterprise systems in some unique way and, and bring that in? in sure, there? absolutely. And um, well, if, if you're going to send me a new HTC One to replace my defective one, which I do have a defective one, I'll uh, see what I can do. You know, <laughs> but they need to know that they have it in stock and that they can ship it to you, right? So does does MindTouch hook into the inventory systems? Absolutely. And, so because it's all first and foremost implemented as a machine interface, like I said earlier, it's very easy to plug it into the on-premise. Uh, SAP systems, and this experience here actually plugs into the SAP on-demand uh, customer support experience and their social experience. So as agents are fielding support requests, like if, if we miss and we don't proactively serve the customer help to prevent them from filing a support ticket or calling or jumping into a chat, then that agent experience has MindTouch saying, here's all of the information this customer's already viewed. MindTouch powers that whole thing. So that the agent's not blindly sharing articles that the customer's already viewed. Yeah. Uh, so we do a whole big data back end nice. on that. Yeah. Uh, then we also recommend knowledge to the agent that they can just drag and drop to send out to the customer. And um, that's what I mean by knowledge as a service. But the missing piece of this that I haven't talked about is what this does is it creates a, um, a cycle of self-improvement that makes it more likely that the customer is going to be able to self-serve. Here's what I mean. If a customer initiates a help request, by the way, we do 600,000 help requests a day for HTC alone. Okay. That's 600,000 potentially confused customers averted. Yep. Uh, and we're not even all of their geographic regions yet. They're, they're rolling us out. But um, uh, the, the point is, is that the self-improving cycle, that's what I was talking about. Um, yep. So. Uh, the agent, if the article doesn't yet exist or he sees something that's not quite right in the article, he can just correct it. Yeah. Uh, the customer providing some feedback on the article can request new knowledge or edits to knowledge in the click of a button. It makes it very easy for them to become co-collaborators, right? Yeah. Um, the other thing we do is we have this um, uh, machine learning algorithms we call help rank. And what it does is it optimizes the organization of the knowledge as well as the search results. Yeah. And the, by organization, I mean if you serve up a customer a particular article for your HTC One, there's all of these related knowledge articles that are provided potentially by technical writers, product people, support people from across the customers, partners. And all of those articles are being optimized to be the most effective knowledge paths yeah. to accelerate a customer's understanding of that product. Yeah. Yeah. When I have a problem with a product, you usually go to Google, right, and start searching. Correct. Yeah. I have, a, a, I don't know, a Epson printer. It doesn't. It's not printing. There's an error code on the screen, and I can't figure out how to make it work. So all you do is go to Google and start searching Epson printer error code fifteen fifty nine. You know. This is this is a great point because um, one of the reason why younger technology companies value what we do so much is uh, we drive oftentimes half of their site traffic. These are prospective yeah. buyers looking for like with RightScale. Um, Rackspace partner. Um, how do I do elastic scaling on Rackspace? Well, guess what? They're probably going to find a knowledge article powered by MindTouch. Zora, the uh, subscription payment system. Uh, another great example. A younger company that is doing uh, half of their site traffic through MindTouch. And yeah. that turns in, then they set up just intelligent automation that t converts those people shopping around to leads and opportunities in paying customers. You, you mentioned elastic scaling in Rackspace. I, I know that we're working on that, so we don't yet do it, and we're going to do it soon. 
that shows you how the company is changing and how the information has, has to change. If I relied on a bunch of PDFs out there. You'd never know. P well, those PDFs are old and crusty and, and out of date when we come out with our new product and boom. Yeah, HP you know, is one of our customers and how long do you think it would take HP to update their product documentation when it's PDFs? Yeah. You know, years. Yeah. Well, we're not and on a, a three-year release cycle anymore. A lot of times, some people even miss that it needs to be updated, right. you know, because it's, it's opaque and it's, nobody's complaining about it, so. <laughs> yeah, and you've got some technical writer in the bowels of product who's, and you, you know, that you've seen them at Microsoft, I know. They, right. they, they're, they're, it's like a machine gun firing, them typing, and they're completely disconnected from the customer. Yeah. They have no clue about what, they're not looking at analytics. There's right. no analytics hooked up to their PDFs they're producing. Uh, so what we do is we unify all that knowledge in product, so you click yeah. on a help button, it opens up a contextually relevant knowledge article, then you can wire that into your marketing automation system, not to mention your off-the-shelf web analytics, and uh, then we also do content analytics to identify gaps and quality issues. How are you building profiles on customers? So a customer comes to this HTC site and starts uh, doing searches, you know, for the HTC One drivers maybe, and, uh, Crash. Then he does a search on HTC One crashing. It, you know, you can tell that it's, he's having one a little bit. Of, ass. He's having a little bit. Well, no. If you're <laughs> yeah, if you're thinking that, that, you're buying it on the uh, sales side, right? Yeah. But, but here you're ha you probably have one. You're trying to figure out it's crashing or it's not. It's not. So it's what we'll do is so we'll trying. we'll capture all of their um, all of their uh, paths through the knowledge. And do, do you that. ask me to log in, or how do you track we'll, me? We'll track you, we'll session you and track you regardless. Okay. So if you're on that device, we're gonna always maintain that on our big data store. As soon as uh, you register, it will synchronize all of your previous paths with your profile. And, so, uh, so is this integrated with the call center? So now, I'm, now I, I can't figure out on the website how to fix my problem, so I call the support line and get somebody on support. Do they have access to what I've been looking through and thinking about? And yeah, searching? that's correct. So the agent, wow. the agents will actually be able to see the articles you viewed, and then when they send you out the article to respond, like, hey, go to this site, or hey, I'm sending you the answer. Uh, not only does it deliver you the answer, which gets tracked, uh, but also delivers related knowledge paths that are going to be most relevant to your user group and products. And well, language. this is brilliant because you know how, if you're already angry at a company because your product's not working. You know, oh man, Toyota I already know where you're going. You say, my computer's not working, and then they ask you to do what you've already done. Yep. You know, did you think about this? Yes, I already searched for that, I've done work. And so they, you know, because they're working off a script and right. they didn't know that I already went to that website and tried those 15 things and then went to this one and tried those 15 things. And, or, right. or you speak with them and they say, oh yeah, it works this way. And it's like, well, I just found this article that it said it works this way. Yeah. You're telling me it's something completely different. Yeah. So what's, you know, which way is it? Um, this is beautiful. And so all of it's out of date. And I, as the end user, can't just say, dude, this, this article sucks. And if you just change this one thing or the support agent who says, yeah, yeah. I know it's wrong up there, but I can't do anything about it. No, they can. They can do something about it. So let's it. say I get to a uh, uh, customer service agent and they, and they have to fill out a ticket. How, how is that handled? Or maybe I fill out a ticket myself. Right, so what we try to do is we try to create uh, layers of escalation. So like the first step is probably you're gonna go to Google and search for an answer, right? Yeah. And obviously we do some just common sense things around SEO to try to make sure that you find the right answer uh, through the self-service help center. Yeah. The next thing is, is um, perhaps you're in product, either uh, a device or an application, just clicking on the help button with MindTouch opens up a contextually relevant knowledge article that's tied back into the same um, um, knowledge Can you click end. on HTC One and see, see what comes up? Sure, so this is, this is a, uh, uh, again, all powered entirely by MindTouch. Um, their documentation for the HTC One is a little nascent right now, uh, but you know, their, their, their community of subject matter experts are building it out. So yeah. if I wanna go into, let's say, the uh, camera and gallery, uh, the way we organize knowledge is, is it's really identical to the, how the human brain organizes knowledge, which is it's based on uh, topic hierarchies and then metadata creates relationships across those hierarchies. Then those, those relationships across the hierarchies become knowledge paths that are related. It gets a little geeky, but um, the point is, is that uh, uh, with the right permission, I can simply click edit on any of these articles. It's got great support for rich media. Um, the experience for authoring is something that is really elegant, like my mom can use it. Yeah. It's, it's super easy to do. 
Uh, and um, let's say I went to file, let's say that we... And each piece of this is API'd, so I could... 100%. There's I could 100% build a system coverage. that talks to this, correct. Like build a Google Glass app or something like Absolutely that? Absolutely correct. In fact, the way that, I mean, MindTouch started off as more of a general purpose, it was an open source project, you recall. Yeah. And um, uh, the reason why I identified this as this is our future as a company was because we had Intuit, Mozilla, a bunch of people building against our APIs to create these contextual multi-channel help systems to do this kind of, of uh, collaboration and, and proactive support. But um, another thing we'll do is, uh, let's say that I want to uh, create a ticket. We'll, every single customer interaction point for support, we'll try to preempt and answer it. So let's say that you've got a problem with your HTC uh, One. MindTouch immediately jumps to the top knowledge articles that are being optimized by our machine learning help link. And as you fill out the uh, support request, we're trying to deflect you to yep. Self-serve. If we do, if you do slip by us, the agent's going to have that opportunity, and of course, it all ties back into a big data backend that allows us to inform HTC how to better serve you, um, how to file, fill gaps in the knowledge, or improve the quality of certain knowledge, as yeah. well as tie into their marketing automation system and also pull customer intelligence are, out to Are market. you asking, let's say I read an article, are you one of those companies that asked at the bottom, did this article mm -hmm. answer the question or not? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you so, know right away that I queried for crashing on HTC One, and I said, no, this article didn't uh, fulfill my needs. And then when I call it, all the, that data is available to that support person. That's a fact, yes. Wow. So also there's a back end um, for uh, the, the analysis team that can look at, well, what are the top search terms? What is their paths? Okay, well, how do people rate articles? Let's look at uh, article quality rating uh, and then slice into topics. Hey, this week we're gonna do a big push around HTC One. We've got you know the support ticket backlogs high on this or support's telling us that the most expensive tickets are X, Y, Z. Let's slice into the data, figure out what are the best articles, who wrote those, those are our experts. Now let's source them to write and improve the, the lower quality articles. You told me earlier that this uh, is really aimed at the support teams and the support infrastructure, but it's affecting sales. How and why? Well, it affects sales for um, at the top of the revenue uh, stack from the standpoint of somebody searching for a particular product is going to find the knowledge articles, right? Then our customers that are savvy will put them on a path to register, put them into a nurture campaign to sell them the product, right? The other thing that happens is this, uh, Zora is one of the, the companies here in San Francisco, I know that you're really familiar with mm -hmm. uh, the guys over there, great guys. They use this as their principal tools for sales engineers. So typically where we get involved is at the time of perhaps discovery, when somebody's like evaluating, doing a technical diligence on products, that's where MindTouch delivers knowledge, either because they're Googling it or because sales engineers are saying, hey, look, I've got articles that can help you with that. Yeah. Then MindTouch comes into play after the customer comes on as a new customer, so that we, what we really try to do for our customers is create negative churn, so their customers become so exceptional with their product, right, yeah. that they buy more products from them. And uh, by act of getting product knowledge from in, in the application or device or through agents or the help center, it all ties back to giving them more intelligence about how to sell better to the customer and serve them better. No, it's really, really cool. I, I like this system a lot. For companies that are thinking of MindTouch or evaluating it versus competitors, I, I assume you still have a few competitors. What, what kinds of things do they need to think about before coming to you? You know, do they have to think about architecting their teams differently? Or? Well, it used to be that you'd have to think about like, oh, well, you know, these kinds of deployments are going to take a year or two, a year and a half. We're going to have to do some data migration. Um, that's not the case. Uh, what we enable our customers to do is if you're a smaller company, um, you're probably up and running in a week or two. If you're a large company like HTC, you're up running in a couple of months. I think HTC launched completely branded, seamlessly integrated across their systems was a three-month deployment timeline. Uh, so, um, really, what 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 you know? It's it's surprising. We talk to companies all the time that are, uh, in today's terms, really sophisticated in how they think about customer experience. And we start asking the questions because every single time, we, even I don't care if you're a, a, a software startup doing two million a year or. HTC doing whatever billions a year, um, we'll take you through uh, a business analysis and hand you a business plan, right? Yeah. Um, when we start asking questions to build up that ROI calculation, it's we we it's never not been the case that we ask questions that they go, we weren't even thinking about that, 
right? We weren't even thinking about how we can use this for driving our marketing automation optimization to do uh, better upsell and renewal through using Marketo or Eloqua, right? Um, so uh, I, I think that, um, uh, you know, we, we take our customers to that process. Um, we, yeah. we take a pretty hand, hands-on approach. Um, and, and luckily, uh, it doesn't matter if you're a Remington, a Rubbermaid, or um, uh, an SAP who's a customer as well. Um, the process is really cookie cutter for MindTouch because yeah. we've done it hundreds and hundreds of times, you know, a thousand times now. So, yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about your company. Uh, how many employees? How is it funded? What's the? Because you're not just a, a Y Combinator startup. You know, <laughs> you've been around for a little bit. And, yeah. Well, uh, I mean, tell we, me what what the process is that you're going through right now. Yeah, we we're based out of San Diego. Uh, we're building an office up here in San Francisco. Uh, Hopefully by the end of, the end of this year we'll be we'll be up and running up here. Um, there's there's uh, we're still relatively small compared to Rackspace. Uh, there's there's about forty something of us, uh, and um, we've got partnerships with SAP and Salesforce. Both of them are driving us a lot of opportunities, uh, and we're we're actively growing the business as quickly as possible. Very cool. Yeah. Where do we learn more about it? Mindtouch.com. Yeah. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, my pleasure as always. It's great Thank to see you, you Robert. Mm -hmm.